Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. We have a packed show for you today, including news that climbing will be in the Olympics in 2024. Now we're starting off the show with some sad news as legendary mountaineer Doug Scott has passed away. Doug Scott was one of the pioneers of high altitude climbing pushing for alpine style ascents and turning away from siege style tactics of old. He made 45 expeditions to the greater ranges, summiting 40 peaks. Amongst many achievements, he made the first British ascent of the southwest face of Everest, and he made an ascent of the Ogre, a 7,285-meter peak in Pakistan with Chris Bonington. He had to fight for survival after breaking both legs on the descent. He has forever cemented himself in mountaineering history and will always be remembered. So Doug Scott was one of those people that I, I remember reading books as, as a kid, you know, like those adventure stories. It's people like him who got me started in climbing. So just incredibly sad to see him pass away from cancer at 79. Yeah, up next, some bouldering news from Austria. 20-year-old Austrian climber Nikolai Uznik, who has been on many IFSC youth podiums and is Austria's 2020 Boulder champion, has now focused all his strength and power on outdoor bouldering and was able to send the iconic test piece Bugeleisen sit, 8C slash plus. It was established by Naleu Kataivo in 2014. Back then, he described it as one of the hardest and best boulders he had ever climbed. Back to the present day, where we caught up with Nikolai to hear all about his ascent. I started trying Bugleis and Sid uh, this summer. I think I was there three or four times and in obviously not the best conditions because it was pretty hot most of the time. So then I kind of uh, stopped trying it for a while because in fall uh, the weather was pretty bad most of the time and it was raining a lot. So two days ago when I got back at it, it was like the fourth time I think where I was there and I just surprised myself by climbing it immediately in my first try. And I think that conditions actually played a, a big part in my sand because it was way colder. As you can see in the video, it's pretty snowy and I had to, to clean the top out for a while. And I even grabbed some holes which were covered in snow at the top out. So yeah, I think that played a big part and it took me about four sessions, I think, to, to climb the sit start. To be honest, I, I didn't really care that much about if it's 8C slash plus or 8C because I just wanted to climb this line. And uh, for example, in my post, I just gave it the same grade as Nalle who first ascended it. So I don't know, I think time will tell. The more people who climb it, the better you can actually grade it. Okay, so in the mellow video about it, you can see the top out was like filled with snow and he topped out on some cold and wet crimps. But yeah, great. I could see you so cringing within at the imagination of doing that one. No, no, no. I'd be ready there with like warm mittens. Yeah, just but like, there you go, mate. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Now I've got a very cool coming of age story from the UK. UKC are reporting that 15-year-old Toby Roberts has climbed the 9A Rain Shadow at Malham Cove in the UK. Toby first came into our radar in 2015 when he became the youngest Brit to climb 8A and we interviewed him for Climbing Daily. That 8A was the bottom half of this 9A Rain Shadow, which was first established by Steve McClure. Toby has now become the youngest British person to climb 9A. As well as crushing outdoors, Toby competes and came second in the European Youth League Championship last year. Nice one, Toby. Uh, awesome progression there, because I remember that that AA uh, and you have to grab the chains of the AA. It's a really weird ending. Okay. And he just apparently in UKC, he just looked up and looked at the extension and thought one day I'll do it. So nice one, Toby. And hopefully uh, we've got a interview coming with him for Climbing Daily in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Ooh, exciting. How do you feel about a 15 year old climbing a 9A though? <laughs> Absolutely fine. No insecurity at all. It's, it's nice one, mate. Congratulations. Terrible flatulence. You uh, see. Anyway, we're moving on to Turkey, where Alex Magus just sent a bunch of hard routes. Alex Magus went to Geik Bayuro in Turkey and came back with an impressive tick list. 
He sent two 8B plus slash 8C routes, nine 8C routes, three of which were first ascents, four 8C plus routes, and he made the first ascent of Turkish haircut, which was bolted by Clem Bacon, and now is possibly the first 9A in Turkey. Cool, relaxing holiday, he went on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> last holiday I went on, I had a lot of beer, a lot of chill time. I was not climbing that many routes. I mean, <laughs> wow. I think last coming holiday I went on, I did 160, and I was satisfied. I was like, ah, oh, that's it. Cool. Can you imagine what a nightmare he must be, though? Because, like, you know, when everyone else is like having a holiday relax time, and he's probably just twitching, looking out the window at the crag, just like, ooh, 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 ooh. let's go, let's go. But interesting thing, he wrote on the Instagram post on the, on the routes he used a knee pad. So it was like three routes. He was like knee pads or knee pad. Is that like beta then? Like, well, is he putting it in the grading or is he just kind saying? Kind of. That? Well, like th parentheses, knee pad. Oh, God. I, I like, does it matter? I, I, yes, to some oh. people, very much so. You know who you are. Um, it's, it's, yeah, the knee pad, no knee pad thing is a, is a big sort of debate okay. about whether it should, is like, should be allowed, if it should. It's a if whole it's, thing. If it's aid or not. But if then, aid, yeah. what if you use a t shirt? That's not a knee pad, is it? Who even knows? Using a knee, maybe no knees. I, look, it's a complicated one, this one, so we'll leave it there. But okay. it's the season for alpine climbing and two new first ascents have been ticked. Matteo della Bordella and Sylvain Subac have made the first ascent of Crossway Friendship on the northeast face of the Piz Badil. This is a mixed line that starts up the north ridge before traversing and eventually joining an established line to the top. It's steep, exposed and a great first ascent. Next is Aaron Durogatti and Simon Ghetti who have climbed and flown off the north face of Mount Ruchfell. According to Planet Mountain, this face has never been climbed before. The line follows a ramp before breaking into the climbing proper with ice sections and rock bands. The pair then flew off the top back down to the valley. So cool to see uh, Alpine Ascents uh, kicking off because obviously a lot of Europe has ski resorts shut, a lot of the lifts aren't working. So I think we might be seeing perhaps less Ascents or maybe sort of more like going for it Ascents, walking up from the valley floor, which sounds awful. Uh, it's not, but I feel they <laughs> cheated the way down because uh, just they flying off. Up, yeah, no, you, I am converted. You know this. I, I don't want to walk down ever again. Ever. But it, it's part of the mountain. You're just doing half of it then. Right. How how sore are your knees today, having ski toured? They are not. It's my hips because I'm sixty. Exactly. Probably. Imagine how much you can <laughs> save yourself by just flying off. You need to learn to fly, Terry. Uh, I feel that will actually ruin my knees. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Ah. Oh, we're going on to some very good news from the Olympics. The International Olympic Committee has confirmed that sport climbing will be part of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. There will no longer be a format with all the three disciplines combined, but two separate events. Speed climbing will get its own medal and bouldering and lead climbing will be a combined event. The quota of the athletes will grow as well, from 40 for the Tokyo Olympics to 68 places for the Paris Olympics. It's good to see that the combined format will change. Yeah, yeah. So you weren't a fan of the combined? Are you? Is I, anybody? I'm a fan of bits of it, all right? I'm a fan of the fact that, that the athletes get to try each other's sports. I thought that was cool. And I yeah. quite like the fact that they had to diversify their training. I like that, but I do agree that sometimes watching some speed climbers trying to lead climb or boulder is not great. So yeah, I'm happy for the changes. Um, I, I'm not sure about the... Um, how oh, is it called? The scoring, though. Like, is it going to be multiplied, do you think, or plus? Oh, no idea. No idea. We'll get through the first Olympics and we'll work it out for the second <laughs> one, I think. But yeah, no, great to see it back. Uh, right, now, story of a boulderer putting up a trab first ascent. We first saw this send on Planet Mountain. 42-year-old Bernd Zangel has sent what looks to be a pretty special trad route. He's perhaps better known to be a boulderer, having put up many hard boulders in Magic Wood and beyond. This new line is in the Valley de Orco and is a mix between high balls and trad. With the crux at the top, he initially wanted to boulder the route, but due to the high fall potential, he hesitated about stacking multiple pads and decided to do it on trad gear. He's named the route Grenzelos, and although he hasn't put a grade on it yet, the moves are probably around 8B. One for the E10 counter. 
So I say 8B, I'm talking about sort of sport 8B, and that was mentioned on 8A. They were kind of like, kind of working out those moves. I find this super interesting because usually we see these high balls, right? And we just see boulders stacking, you know, like building a huge platform, stacking pads. He doesn't like to do that. He thinks it's sort of like a bit new school. He's a bit old school. So yeah, decided to trad lead it and it looks wicked. Um, but yes, I do think it's part of the E10 counter. Let's see. It's 9B counter time. <laughs> Right, so I think that's the only thing on it, right? Yes. Oh no, the 8C plus. Yeah, but it's a maybe plus, because Jakob Schubert downgraded it. Okay, Jakob, you've ruined <laughs> a whole vibe here. Okay, so it's, it's a maybe plus. It's a maybe plus. Are well, we putting Burnt on the E10 though? Yeah, 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 let's. You, you reckon? Yeah. All right, Burnt, congratulations, you're on the E10 counter. <laughs> Hugo, welcome back into the content seat. Thanks very much. It's good to be here. Good to be back with you guys. Mm. You guys are looking great, by the way. Thanks. Thanks. I just, see, I look I'll, at both I'll of you when I, I say know. that. I like the look, because last week you went sort of like fisherman style with the hat, and this week you've gone sort of like check shirt suaveness. It's, it's just good. a variant on the check shirt, really. There was a check shirt last week. I just had a lot of check shirts. If anyone wants to send me more check shirts, please don't. All right. I do. I don't do. want, I don't sure, want any more. space for a check shirt. I've got enough. I've got, I've got, I've got too many already. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's um, use in, into itself. <laughs> True, yes. Should we re-record the <laughs> first bit and put it in? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so first up, we've got, a me it's a strong media week. Uh, uh, first up, we've got Trevor Messiah, the man with the greatest name in the whole wide world ever, ever, ever. Uh, and he has done a tip series for us. Nobody's looking at me because I don't know if I'm gonna, what I'm going to say, but they're mm. doing a tip series for, uh, for us. Here's a little clip. Climbing. Okay, so I've arrived at my anchor. I'm gonna clip in with a quick draw there into that bolt. And, all right, tight. Okay, so got a quick draw on that bolt here. Um, and I'm gonna now put a screw gate onto this one. And I'll just need a little bit of slack and I'll clip the rope into that as well. So I'm on both bolts and now I can lock the gate. Okay, so tight. When you get to your sport anchor, you don't really know sometimes what you're gonna find. Um, so on this occasion, I have two bolts. They're not separated by a chain. So, or sorry, they're not linked with the chain. So therefore, what I've done is I've clipped into one with a quick draw, and then I've clipped into the other one with a locking screw gate. And what I've also done is opposed the gates just for a little bit of extra safety. Yeah, so there you go. That is a tip series from Trevor Messiah. They're continuing sporadically. Yeah, the next thing. I think we're just going to drip them. Drip them in, yeah. You're going to drip them. Yeah, but if you're more of a beginner, this is like the series for you. I think. Okay, for the beginners out there, pay attention. Uh, next up, I just want to quickly want to talk about the Real Rock series that's coming up this Friday. For real? Yeah, exactly. Uh, very good, Teresa. Awful. That was, that was pre-rehearsed and she still managed she to... She should be punished for that. Very pun good. Very good. That oh, was even chill. that was a bit more high level pun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah. was good. I actually I hate most of your puns. That was actually How quite dare a good you? one. My puns are wonderful. Um, <laughs> the Real Rock ha is premiering this Friday. We are doing a several interviews with all the protagonists uh, coming up this week: Melissa Laneve, Jen Randall, filmmaker Lonnie Kalk, uh, Malik, uh, Malik, Malik who did an interview Black the other day. Yep. Check, uh, be tuned on Thursday, Friday on Climbing Daily. There's going to be like a little mini series coming out. We're just going to put them out, whatever. We're going to. That's a risky thing to say because we haven't done any of the interviews yet. <laughs> True. You it, are. I mean, <laughs> this might not happen at all. Hopefully. But I think because we are professionals, yeah. we'll make it happen. We'll I'm sure. It happen. I'm sure it's really going to happen. <laughs> Very good. Try and squeeze oh. two more puns in before I leave. It's the okay? same pun. You've got. You've got to mix the puns. No, up. I, I, I get that. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, it's good. Thank really. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, that's enough. <laughs> that one, try, try another one. Uh, okay, next up, we've got a little clip of a film coming out this Friday uh, from Mickey Wallaben. We all like Mickey Wallaben. Mm -hmm. He's a legend. We all like Action Talker. Talk. Here's a little clip from his latest film. Oh! 
Alta. So that's the first ascent he did in his backyard, which everybody seems to be doing these days, their backyard, depending what their backyard is. Yeah. His backyard mm. is a massive range of mountains. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a bit so annoying that, that, isn't it? Like, you know, you wish your backyard was sort of a small hill. Well, like a, like a flat thing that you could just do, yeah. go for a bike ride on, but it's just a massive mountain. All you've got to do is climb it. Yeah. You've got to be a good climber. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, unlucky, Mickey, that's tough. you got a tough break. Uh, anyway, that's it. Cheers, Hugo, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no worries. Content king. What are you most excited about this week? Content wise, whatever, just Trev, anything. Best name in climbing. Trevor Messiah. All right, I'm going to double mic drop. See you later. I'll see ya. I shattered your face. Uh, Sorry. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Boom. Now, Christmas is just around the corner, and this is important if you're looking to online shop because there's the delivery time and all that stuff. So, you need to be thinking about this stuff. But we've got you back because there are currently four collection pages up on the Epic TV shop going through different gift ideas, different price ranges. Uh, so, Teresa, I'm, I'm expecting an expensive present. Right, like the best gifts under 50 euros. I was, I mean, fine. Look at that wink. <laughs> yeah. That was a wink. What are you buying me? Um. <clears throat> Well, I think Epic is gonna get it for you. Right. Right. Anyway, E9 odd socks. Cause uh, matching socks are difficult to match after a wash. That is true. Uh, and I've noticed it a couple too many times. So there you go, odd <laughs> socks. Awesome. I would get you a poser because you are not a poser. Uh, the poser Epic TV cap. 13 euros, absolute bargain. Merch, it's all the rage at the moment. So get some Epic TV merch for Christmas. Mm, I want something else. Can I have the AB Plus Titan wristband? Maybe, we'll see what budgets look, are like. Look, I don't end. have any. Okay, fine, maybe, perhaps. But if you want a gift idea, then do head over to the shop because we've got you covered on that one. Comment of the week. Uh, Christmassy? Oh, is it Christmassy? It's, it's surely soon, we're in December. I haven't heard a carol yet. Comment of the week. What the f***? No. Awful. Oh, I'm sorry, Carolus around the world. Uh, I've got a really short one, um, which I didn't understand. It's from Mike Silver, and he just seems, says, seems legit. Smiley face emoji. Yeah, yo. What? It's like legit. the show legit? What we say is legit? No, I actually know what it is about. Um, <laughs> it what, you know, It is about um, that story about Jonathan Segrist of like, he stars on the leg. Oh, yeah. And then Flo put in that seems legit uh, meme fine. thing. That makes more sense. All right, Mike, cheers. That does seem legit. Fair enough. Why is Hugo pointing towards a bag? Thanks. All right, Alice. Oh, yes. We've got to find Alice. Yeah, we've got to find... No, it's not Alice. Wait, uh, it's... Uh... Alicia. 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 Look, this is becoming a serious issue, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Terry, yes. we'll get to your comment of the week in a sec. But, Alicia, yeah, yeah. if you're watching, we need to find you. You are a competition winner from two live shows ago on a Friday. We want to give you this backpack. So if you're listening, get in touch, uh, and then we can get in touch with you and drop us your contact details and stuff. I mean, it's a nice backpack. It's a lovely so backpack. Whoever knows Alicia, who goes to Vauxhall or the other one. Vauxhall. <laughs> that thing. <laughs> or the castle. Yeah. Um, any, any, anyway, anybody who knows her, please drop us a message. There you that's, go. That's your, it. your comment of the week. My comment of the week um, is on Ale. No, actually. <laughs> my comment of the week is from Dan Zevi. And he's saying, waiting for the Ale counter. Julie um, Chardonnay, that bit. Yeah, but like, how do we do an Chanel LA count? It's a Chanel. Oh, You're just thinking about wine. I am. It's, it's, a a, it's a really early. It's before lunch. Oh, it's 12 now. It's fine. Legit. <laughs> anyway, um, LA counter, uh, how are we going to do it? I think we should have it. So thanks, Dan. But um, So this is the amount of times people shout when it, Ale. Julia saying, LA, 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 LA. Yeah, but so for like every Epic TV video, we're counting the LA's. That, that's that's an admin task for someone out there. Uh, if anyone wants to make a spreadsheet, you know what to do. Make a spreadsheet, let us know. A lay counter. I think that's it. I think we're done. Uh, See? Si. Yes. Show se finito. No, è finito. Uh, basta, finito, basta. Okay, ciao, raga. See you, See you later, next guys. time. Have a good one.